I'm good evening. There. Good evening. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Uh, good evening, uh, sir. Debasis Chaudhary, sir. I am Dr. Meeta Paswala, APS President. I welcome you as we are starting e-learning neurolo neurology for the year 2020-21. I invite you uh, at uh, our APS platform. Now I request our moderator, yeah. uh, Dr. Kantavin Butra, yeah. ma'am, and Manoj Bhai to carry out the further uh, lecture. Kanta ma'am, please. Okay. Hello. Yes. Good evening, yes. everybody. Yes. President, yes. Good Meeta evening, President. everybody. I have joined Dr. Ajay Jain. Good evening. Okay. Dr. Ah, Manoj Bhai and team INS and all my friends. I am really thankful to you all. I have only one question to everybody. How is, how is your migraine during the lockdown period? Because I personally yes. feel it has decreased a lot due to timely food, good sleep, exercise, and in the form of housework and family life enjoyment. So, on one side, migraine spectrum is a lifestyle disease. In between migraine with aura, lots of medicine for migraine. And with that also, if it doesn't come under control and if the life gets disturbed too much, CZRB inhibitors with us. And for that, we have the best person to talk is Dr. Devas Chaudhary. And for I think I'm handing over the mic to Dr. Manoj Bhai. He is the best person to introduce him. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Kanta, ma'am. Uh, dear all, uh, on behalf of APS and Neuro Club Surat, I would like to welcome you all on this first session of e-neuro learning. We are keeping this session every Saturday at around 9.30. And uh, I think Dr. Devashish Chaudhary, who is teacher of mine, he made my career and uh, uh, throughout uh, my DM uh, 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 studies. Uh, now, as we know, uh, uh, during these new normal times where uh, social distancing is a part of our life, yet the process of learning can't be halted. We have started this e-learning program every Saturday at around 9.30. And in this session, we chose uh, all those topics who are practical uh, 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 to everyone in day-to-day -day life uh, uh, for the physicians as well as for the neurophysicians. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce my teacher, Professor Dr. Devashish Chaudhary, who is currently heading a uh, department of GB Panth Hospital, New Delhi, as a director professor. Right from the beginning, sir has uh, received multiple awards. Uh, he has been awarded as best uh, uh, a student in 1989-90, he best senior resident in 1995. He received an uh, award for, uh, from uh, European uh, Headache Federation and the British Bash Cambridge UK in 2001. He received Common, uh, Commonwealth Fellowship in Stroke from Edinburgh 2003. Indira Gandhi and a lot of uh, 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 awards from the Indian government like Indira Gandhi Association uh, Appreciation Award, Bhagirathi Sam, uh, Samman Award, and Delhi State Awards. He was trained in good clinical practice under Harvard Medical School, USA, and he had been convener of uh, headache subsection from 2013 in IAN. And uh, this is a proud thing that he is a member of proudest movement of India. He is a member of international research group C, uh, in CGRF, uh, CGRF on, on education and research. He has been pub uh, he has published around more than 150 national and international papers. He edited around 11 books and he was the editor of Indian clinical update series of headache published by Indian Academy of Neurology. In 2018, he received a Professor G. Arjundas Oration uh, by this Institute of Neurology, Madras Medical College. And he received Professor 
B.C. Bansal and Mrs. Uma Bansal oration by the Association of Physician of India. Currently, he is uh, he is secretary of Delhi Neurological Association and executive committee member of Indian Academy of Neurology. Over to you, Devashi sir. Thank you, thank you, Manoj, for a kind introduction. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I really express my sincere thanks to Dr. Manoj, my younger colleague, and uh, uh, Dr. Apte, uh, Anirudh Apte, who has been uh, again uh, with us uh, in Jibipan, and all the rest of you uh, and of the Surat uh, Medical Fraternity, who have gathered to start this new uh, you know, experience of e-learning. Uh, and these are the changing times, and uh, obviously we get to be ready for the new normal. So being in the headache field for the last 30 years, uh, so I'm going to talk about something different today, and I'm going to talk about the migraine therapy in 2020, uh, and what is the new normal that we are going to see. Uh, I request everybody to mute their uh, microphone and they can pose their questions in the chat box and then I can take them up once the uh, lecture is over. Uh, so this is the new normal. When you see now the patients, you have a barrier. All years of medical training, we have been told that, okay, you have to get close to the patient. You have to listen sympathetically. You have to examine them in detail. And uh, now people are saying that, no, there has to to be a barrier between you and the patient and uh, this is going to be the new normal for all of us in, in the near future and because this coronavirus pandemic is going to stay for a long time and we are we have to get used to it and we have to mend our ways no longer the ways of the past will actually help us and uh, we need to learn it fast so uh, my disclosures are none uh, for this, but then I have a disclaimer. And as was actually in the beginning, uh, there are a lot of types of headache, as you know, migraine, headache due to hypertension, due to stress. But now a new headache has come because of webinars. Now there are lots of uh, you know webinars happening all around, and uh, I hope that uh, my talk doesn't give you headache. Um, and the previous uh, uh, participant said that uh, she was feeling better in terms of her headache because of the lockdown. Uh, I will touch upon that subsequently, but obviously my intention is not to give you a headache because of this webinar, but to you know apprise you of uh, the events that are going to unfold uh, recent in the recent uh, times and as well as in the future of 2021. Now, this is all we know, coronavirus with the spikes and uh, the, like the sun's corona. And since this isolation from the patients of an unexplained new, uh, pneumonia, it has spread to almost all parts of the world. And WHO declared on March 11th as a COVID-19 pandemic. And at this time of presentation, there are more than 53 lakhs confirmed COVID-19 cases with more than 3.4 lakh deaths globally, which is a huge figure. Uh, within a short time. And India is also facing an unprecedented challenge as the number of confirmed cases and deaths are rising steadily despite undertaking a complete nationwide lockdown since uh, 24th March 2020. And at this time of presentation, there are more than 1.27 uh, lakh confirmed COVID cases in India and about 3,750 deaths uh, due to COVID 19. So we are in a difficult time. But let us shift our focus to migraine. If you know this migraine, now migraine rules the headache world and the disease world. There is a global burden of study uh, which was published in Lancer in 2016. And according to that, if you see the most common causes, the sixth one cause, if you see from permanent caries, latent TV, tension headache, ascariasis, iron deficiency anemia, and then the migraine. So this is the sixth commonest cause of headache uh, of, the, of a disease in the world with a global yearly prevalence of about 14.7%. But more importantly, that this, this disease, the migraine, is number two in the disability, the years lost because of the disability. The number of uh, you know, times, the days in a month and a year, you are not able to work, function properly. And that is the disability, and there's a huge, huge burden. And nothing comes near it except the low back pain, right? 
So migraine is a very, very important disorder for all of us to understand. It doesn't kill people, but it makes them disabled. And the huge, huge burden of this disability is reflected world over. So therefore, migraine needs to be taken into uh, consideration from that point of view, rather than just, just a headache, right? Indians have seemingly more migraine than in the West. There has been a very good publication from Nimhans in Karnataka, which has shown that one year prevalence is about 25.2%. And uh, we had uh, one recently conducted a study in the National Capital Territory with the aid of uh, uh, fighting the global burden against headache uh, with their group. And we also found a very high percentage of 27% roughly. So in fact, one in five persons in India is having migraine. So that's a huge, huge burden. And as a physician, you are going to see a lot of these migraine cases in your clinics, right? And if you talk about the numbers, then of course, you'll have a 33 crores Indians have migraine, right? Now, almost the US population, eight crores require active treatment out of them. 2.6 crore patients have basically a chronic migraine in which the migraine days are much more normal than half of the you know days of the month. That is more than 15 days in a month. Uh, they are having these daily headaches and at least eight days of classic migraine features they are called chronic migraines. They're technically very difficult to treat and they all require active treatment. And then out of that about 0.5%, about 16.5 lakhs have refractory migraine, but whatever you do, you know, nothing helps. And they keep on coming to my clinic, the tertiary care clinic, because they continue to suffer uh, very much. So migraine is a huge, huge problem. The idea of showing this to you is to understand that it's not just simply a headache, you know, and you take a paracetamol or ibuprofen tablet and goes off. It's not that. It's much, much more than just a headache. Now, in terms of the COVID pandemic, there's important factor which you have to factor in that how, what is the percentage of patients who are presenting to the emergency department because of the headaches? In fact, two to four percent of the emergency department visits occur due to non traumatic headaches, and out of that, about 35% of the visits occur due to migraine. And it has been established that 1.2 million migraine patients visit ED in Canada. That, that's a huge number. So in India also, a lot of people visit, they get the injections, they get tramadol, and then they, you know, they are discharged a few hours later or the next day morning from the ED. So that's a thing which you need to prevent during COVID times. You don't need patients to come to the ED. So what are the challenges and the new normals that we are actually going to face? So first thing is the minimization of face-to-face -face visit by the migraine patients to the clinic and the hospital. So you have to devise some way to uh, actually accomplish that. Then we have to think about the certain effective acute management programs. Then some patients with migraine have the continuous cycle of pain, which doesn't go off with the conventional medication. So you need to concentrate on that so that they also don't land up in an emergency or you know, knock you off by phoning you or repeatedly coming to you over and over again. Then the preventive treatment has to be you know, modified or augmented. If they are not on preventive treatment, then preventive treatment has to be started. Then there is a very increasing number of these healthcare workers who are fighting the COVID war you know, in hospitals, in, 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 in COVID hospitals or even non-COVID hospitals who are already having the migraine, but their migraine is going out of hand. Now, uh, there was this person who was saying that well, my, my migraine has become better because I'm staying at home. But then I have got a lot of calls during this lockdown period where actually the migraine has tremendously increased and they are actually fighting a battle uh, how to you know, kind of control because they are quarantined or they are isolated at their homes. They are not able to go out. They are not able to contact the doctors. Multiple reasons, but their migraines are actually uh, increased. In fact, I am conducting an international study on a new preventive medication, migraine. So the, it was an episodic migraine. So the people who are having less than you know, 14, uh, four to 14 attacks per month, but uh, when we recruited about 10 such patients, but then the lockdown came and all of these patients actually became negative for inclusion and randomization into the study just because their headache frequency increased more than 14 days. So people are having a lot of problems during this lockdown period and COVID pandemic. The fear factor, the anxiety factor, the factor related to the loss of job, 
loss of you know kind of getting the livelihood there is a migration of workers so all this are causing a huge huge problem and therefore the migraine is on the increase in the lockdown period increasing use of non pharmaceutical treatments especially neuromodulation this also we need to consider now first thing first that can the covid patient present as a migraine like headache headache has been described as one of the symptom of covid 19 infection and yes it can be seen about 8% and they can have a phenotype of migraine so any new onset headache in a patient with fever in your if the patient comes then you must suspect a covid infection the dictum is this that if there is a fever and if the headache comes then irrespective of the phenotype you should actually look for covid in this patient there is a systematic review from the uh, spanish group which again showed that about 8% of the patients are actually having significant headache and this figure actually has increased after the recognition of this symptom the later publication it is showing as i as about about 30% of the people are actually having some sort of headaches at the time of presentation so be aware that even if it's a known migraine patient even if it's a known tension type headache patient and if they are having an increased frequency increased severity of the headache increased or the change in the character of the headache and with fever or a dry cough then you should suspect for a covid infection so what is a new normal now the main new, new normal which is actually feasible right at the moment is telemedicine now telemedicine should be practiced to minimize the direct face to face visits and this can very well be applied for headache patient and india has got one of the largest numbers of smartphones about uh, 502 million internet users about 451 million and so therefore it's a feasible option but the question is that is there any evidence that this actually is helpful at least for headaches there are now a lot of papers which have been published in the last decade but not taken up seriously but now people are looking at them and taking them up seriously is that telemedicine consultations when compared to face to face consultation leads to an equally high satisfaction rate for the patient it is it has got non inferior outcome in fact in pediatric headaches also it has found to be effective and in fact american academy of neurology the telemedicine work group has shown the utility of telemedicine in chronic neurological diseases and you know the migraine is the most common chronic neurological illness so therefore telemedicine has to be prescribed so therefore you have to be ready by creation of a digital prescriptions where you can actually you know keep the patient's confidentiality and privacy in check so they have to you have to devise a way of doing that then there are also issues regarding the physician license now i i think the legal system has opened up and now people are allowed to do because there was initially a provision by supreme court that by whatsapp and other you know platforms you cannot actually write the prescriptions and give the direction but now this has been released uh, relaxed in view of the covid 19 so this needs to be more regulated and the physicians group like your group should take up a you know kind of a stand that okay this is how we are going to practice and that is basically going to change the malpractices because there might be an element of malpractice because you know net is open to everyone so therefore people might do malpractice and then of course how the modalities of reimbursement for the consultations that you have provided over say a whatsapp over a video chat or over a you know a email uh, what how the modalities of reimbursement has to be you know formulated that also needs to be so i think the societies like your society or the national societies should take this up in earnest and right now because this is going to come this is and if we don't do it in a, in a, in a thorough manner right now we are going to see a lot of problems because of this so this is one new normal then there has been some newer drug and devices for acute treatment that has come up now uh, i'll come to that before that i will just orient you you yourself you about the newer agents and the mechanisms of you know their actions now you see that classically conventionally you have the following drugs for migraine treatment that you have anti emetics like metoclopramide like uh, percoprazine you have acetaminophen paracetamol nsaids like ibuprofen diclofenac naproxen you have ergot derivatives right ergotamine tartrate usually with combination with other agents and then by in last 3 decades we have been using triptans quite a lot and they are the tailor made drugs because they act on a specific receptor 
which is involved in the neuroinflammation in the brain, which is thought to be a causative phenomena, which is causing the headache in migraine, right? And then in, in difficult cases, we use sympathomimetics and opioids, right? But there you should be avoided. So this is the conventional paradigm. This is the conventional examples of how you treat the patient. Now let us talk about the triptan. As you know, the triptans are the potent 5-HT1B1D agonist. So what this implies is that this 5-HT receptors, they are present according, uh, along the blood vessels. So what they do is this, the triptans, by being a potent agonist, they do a constriction of these vessels and decrease this neuroinflammation and release of the neuropeptide called CGRP. And that actually helps in alleviation of migraine. But the problem is this, that this 1B1B5HT receptors, they are present all over the body and especially in the brain and also in the coronaries, right? So whenever we do uh, give these drugs, there is a potential problem that in predisposed individual like patients with uncontrolled hypertension or coronary artery disease, they may react differently when you give this medication. And they are relative contraindications for giving the triptans. So the prototype was sumatriptan. That was introduced in 1991. And this is the uh, drug, uh, the usual drug, the uh, analgesic, uh, which uh, we actually use. And so basically, we have been, these are non-specific agents which have a general action by penetrating the brain and affecting the C, C receptors, right? C fibers, right? Pain to decrease the pain. So they are having an effect, but the effect is not specific and it usually takes time. You can give them and you have been giving them, but remember that you have to give a right dose. You give a dose, well, I've seen prescriptions of naproxen 250 milligram, useless. You want to give naproxen, give at least 500 milligrams. You want to give ibuprofen, give at least 600 milligrams. Because until and unless you give the proper dose, the headache is not going to be benefited. And then the patient keep on lingering the headache. And that is a very important reason for chronification. So you have to kill the headache, right? So you have to give a good dose. That is the first thing. And secondly, you have to give this dose very early. You have to tell the patient, don't wait. Don't think that maybe you know, it might become better. I will take after half an hour, one hour, or two hours, or three hours. And now I've tried everything, the tea, the band on the head, the bombs, the sleeping. Nothing is helped. Now almost half a day is gone. And now I want to take analgesics. That is not going to work. Because there occurs a process in the brain called central sensitization. Pain begets the pain. So therefore, these drugs become ineffective. So if you want to give the drug, then ask, tell the patient that, okay, if you know that headache is coming, wait for about 20 minutes or half an hour, you know that throbbing is there, the typical symptoms are there, so you give the drug, you take the drug. Otherwise, you are not going to get good relief. So that is very, very important. One point, initially during the COVID pandemic, there was some concern about the use of ibuprofen and WHO has, uh, you know, kind of uh, issued a uh, you know, kind of a uh, letter that it might not be a good idea to use ibuprofen, but FDA has said okay, there is nothing, you know, significant uh, clinical data that it worsens the COVID-19, so it can be given, ibuprofen can be given safely to COVID-19 patients. Of course, the drugs to be avoided are barbiturates and opioids. You don't get during the COVID time the people to get, you know, a lot of side effects or get drowsy or get, you know, uh, lethargic or develop a situation where the chances of getting a dependence on these drugs increases to result in a medication overuse. So what happens that, you know, these patients keep on taking these drugs. So initially once a day, then twice a day, then thrice a day. So I have a patient who are taking actually three or four tablets of opioids or barbiturates in a day, along with lots of analgesics, a lot of, you know, tramadol, and they are very difficult to treat because they develop a persistent medican, medication overuse headache. Now, there are a lot of preparations in the market, like for example, a common drug which is prescribed in India is vasograin, but you see that there's a combination, right? There's a caffeine, 
highly potent agent to cause a medication overuse fluorocortisone which is an antiemetic ergotamin tartrate and paracetamol so again you should refrain from giving a combination and anyway ergotamin is not a good drug because that predisposes to medication overuse and also it has got a lot of peripheral vascular side effects right including the cardiovascular side effects so you should avoid that so now let us talk about this triptans which i told you that all these factors are there to you know judge the efficacy of triptans and on all these factors actually the effect has been to the tune of about 40 to 60% that is that means that patient has got pain free there is no pain at 2 hours in about 40% they have a significant relief of pain but it is not entirely gone in about 60 to 70% and once given the 24 hour sustained effect is very low that is again the patient after few hours like 7 8 9 hours they again might have a rebound of headache and the tolerability and side effect i have said the cardiac side effects because of the 5 ht uh, receptors specific to the coronaries so what has happened in today's world and what is a new normal which is going to come is this that 5 ht 1 f receptor agonist which is known as a diton or the clinical prototype of the name of the drug is lasmi ditan right so the important thing to remember here is that that this 5 ht 1 f receptors are not present in coronaries so the people are safe using this drug those patients who are having say um, you know uh, cardiovascular disease or hypertension they can be given this drug so this is a new normal which has come and this has come by a randomized controlled trials the phase 2 and in phase 3 you see that clearly the effect is actually uh, seen very early from about half an hour which get maximum by about 1 hour and then is sustained to 2 hours period the curve differs the from the placebo so last bit item which is now we are undertaking a international trial of this in india but it is going to come by the end of this year and so this will become a good drug instead of the usual triptans that you have been using for long time and this will and this is again another trial the spartan trial which is again showing that the lasmiditon is very useful for acute treatment of migraine and they have done the post op analysis of the cardiovascular risk factors and the patients who are taking concomitant other migraine preventive drugs and found that this drug actually is very good in, in terms of uh, this uh, patients who are slightly risky in terms of giving triptan so there is a new triptan which has come and it is going to be in 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 usage in the in 2020s 21 to 25 so this is the four or five years this was going to become one of the important drugs for acute management of migraine the second molecule which has got the attention of the researchers is this is a calcino calcitonin gene related peptide this is as i said is a peptide family is a uh, you know uh, and it has got various forms without going into the details what has happened that this receptor there is a cgrp receptor in the vasculature of the brain in the brain stem and the brain pain modulating pathways and this have been you know the target of therapy that if we can block this you know we can actually take care of migraine so it can be it has been uh, you know there are two types of molecules one called the small molecule cgrp receptor antagonist and they are named as g pans right g pans so the acute treatment of episodic migraine this two new g pans has come it's called rimigipan and ubrogipan and for preventive therapy there is one which is called atogipan so what has happened that is ubrogipan if you say take 50 mg or 100 mg that has again has shown a clear differentiation you see the dotted line of the placebo and this line for the drug and you see from 1 hour to 2 hours time this line separate out and these are a totally new targeted therapy for the acute migraine which has come up this has been now marketed in us and in india also it is going to come by 2021 so this will be the new normal for the acute treatment along with the lasmitidan right so this will again have lot of you know implications because the effect comes very early within about one and half hours and it sustains to four hours and then keeps on sustained until about eight hours so therefore these drugs are going to be the new normals what is the safety profile except for mild nausea somnolence and dry mouth in some patients generally they have been reasonably safe they have been reasonably well tolerated 
because adverse events have been reported in less than, uh, you know, uh, very less in, in more than 2% of the population. So therefore, they are safe and they have come to stay for migrant treatment. But what actually has changed the game, the new normal in 2020 for migrant therapy are these molecules, which are known as monoclonal antibodies to the CGRP receptor or the ligand, right? And there are four drugs which have come and all are now FDA approved. They are called erinumab, galcanizumab, eptizumab, and framinizumab. Now, these drugs basically are divided based on that whether they are humanized or human. The erinumab is a human, the other are humanized molecules. And the eptizumab is a ligand, whereas they are the receptor blockers, the other three, erinumab, galcanizumab, and premanizumab. Now, what you actually look at the, the THA, they are very long acting drugs, right? Once you give the drug a single injection, it lasts for days, up to a month, right? So therefore, the dosing is very, you know, convenient. For erinumab, galcanizumab, mefrinizumab, once a week, once a month, four weekly, subcutaneous injection, just like an insulin syringe, you know, you give a subcutaneous injection, and for one month, nothing to be done. So this will come very handy, handy in our you know coming days with because you did the patient didn't come and there is no question of any titration, any dose escalation. A single shot and it's over. And if the patient is having a severe this thing, even you can use this IV, the brief admission, and then three months off, right? So every three months, one IV injection. So therefore, these drugs are going to be the game changers in the in the coming months and the years uh, for migraine treatment. Now, what are the evidence of their efficacy? And you can see that this is the blue bars are the placebo and the, you know, the violet and the yellow bars are the active drugs. And they all show a good efficacy to the tune of about 50 to 60%, right? And this is, this is, this is, this is, a, uh, this is also suggesting that this effect is across, across the board. All the molecules are actually having more or less a similar pattern of you know, effect. So that actually gives you a, a kind of a confidence that, okay, we are now dealing with a group of drugs which are behaving more or less the same. And this is another way you can see that the, you know, the placebo effect. Now in, in migraine treatment, one has to remember the placebo effect is very important. Now placebo effect is coming to about 30% and the effect of the drug is coming to about 45% to 60%. So which is a significant jump from the placebo effect. And therefore these drugs are known to work. And not only that, you know, in conventional drugs, when you give, it takes time, it takes weeks. What do you say to the patient? Okay, I'm giving you this drug, say propranol or flunazine or amitriptyline. It will slowly and slowly get better, right? You have to wait, you have to be patient. But here with these drugs, you know, there are now studies that there is very early onset of the effect, the one week, two weeks, three weeks, and four weeks. Actually, in comparison to the placebo, the effect on the migraine reduction in the migraine frequency comes very, very fast. So this is a very good advantage with this drug one. Similarly, this is, that was for the last one, this is from the erinumab, and this is for the, you know, uh, galcanizumab. That again, you show it's, uh, no, sorry, this is also again for erinumab, and this again shows the another thing. It not only comes fast, but the effect lasts persist in the open level trial. They kept on giving the injections every, you know, three months uh, to these patients on uh, open level. And then they found that, you know, the patients are actually sustained, having a sustained effect. So the drugs not only help in the initial phase, they're also helpful in the sustained phase. Similarly with galcanizumab, EVOL1 and EVOL2 studies, again, you see the same kind of curve that, you know, when they actually have the cessation of the, uh, you know, double blind phase and the extension phase, you see that, that whenever you stop the drug after six months, then the effect slowly comes back, but it still is better than the placebo, right? It still is better. So the effect lasts for about a year or so, you know, again, another, another six months or so. So these drugs are going to be there for the new normals for my patients. What is the safety and tolerability? Initial safety and tolerability are excellent. No clinically significant changes in vitals or ECG. To date, no cardiovascular adverse events have been shown and no change in the hepatic enzyme. So therefore, I think that 
it is very important that we understand these drugs and they actually open up a lot of possibilities during this time when we don't need the patients to come again and again for medications to us. So if you compare the conventional treatment, what is the change? That the specificity target is high, dose titration is not required, as I said, the frequency of intake is monthly or quarterly, onset of action is rapid, and the side effect profile is almost negligible side effect. Now, recently, some constipation, so people are uh, complaining of constipation and some local site, you know, uh, rash. But otherwise, uh, there's, there's, they're absolutely, uh, you know, so far, very good in terms of the side effect profile. And then they are actually being indicated both for acute and chronic migraine. But of course, the downside will be the cost. But I'm told that because of this trial, which we did, with Erinomab, and this is going to be now uh, launched in India by 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 about um, you know I think August or so. Uh, so based on this, I think uh, they are going to target a large number of population, and the cost is eventually going to come down. So, ladies and gentlemen, in 2020 to 2030, if you look at the migraine treatment, right? So you have this eptuzumab, IV injection three weekly, but more importantly, you have these three molecules like the galcanizumab, MGALT, and uh, Amovic, Erinumab, and Ejovi, that is the uh, primanizumab, they are once in a month subcutaneous injections, and that is going to take care of your migraine patients quite well. And I, I, we are hoping that they, this in the Indian patients, because the results we got from our study, the international one, which is known as the EMPOWER study, is also very, very encouraging. Now, then there are other ways of doing things. This is a common thing which is available in India, which is called a cephalic device. It's called the supra um, orbital nerve stimulation, transcutaneous electrical nerve. So this is this device, which is the original version and now a small, uh, you know, smart uh, version is available. This cost about 18,000 bucks. Uh, and now they are coming up with, a, you know, even the stimulator at the back. Uh, so this is going to, and we are actually, you know, I am in collaboration with the IIT Delhi. Uh, we are making, uh, trying to make uh, one uh, device for India at, at a much cheaper cost. So we are with a, with a, with a AI incorporated in that. So probably by, by 2021, we'll try to be able to get the Indian version. Now, conventional uh, oral agents, again, the responder rate has been 50%. As you know, that 50% of the attacks or 50% of the times are relieved by the oral agents. And the common preventive drugs which you have been using so long, propranolol, amitriptyline, divalprox, topiramate, and fluorazine, you know that the, these drugs take time to act, but they are good. Otherwise, although they will have some side effects, and you have to be cautious about those side effects, like tiredness, uh, listlessness in propranolol, sedation in amitriptyline. Of course, in any uh, women of a reproductive age, you will not give divalprox. Uh, because the weight gain, tremors, and teratogenicity. Topiramate, of course, caution is glaucoma and uh, renal stones. Many of these patients will have these paresthesias. Uh, but if you slowly escalate the dose, then they are much better off. And then you can have fluorazine in the nighttime once a day. That's a good drug, but weight gain can happen in about 10 to 15%. And some people may get depressed. Now, during COVID time, uh, another caution is that, uh, you know, there have been also studies which showed that the con uh, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors like uh, uh, candesartan and lisuropil, although they are not very much used in India, uh, but they are in West, for example, they have been using candesartan very, very much for prophylactic therapy of migraine. So that is a concern because, the, as you know, the virus actually gains entry uh, by through the angiotensin receptor type 2. And um, therefore, at this time, it is better to avoid, uh, although the FDA uh, has said that there is no conclusive proof that actually it does harm. But I would say that at this point of time, you should avoid giving a ACE uh, or a receptor blocker. The problem with this conventional drugs, as I said, is adherence. Now, there is this, there is this you know, you study which has shown that adherence is only to the tune of, you know, uh, uh, in initially, in the first eight to 12 weeks, it's still good. But by the 20, 16 to 26 weeks, except for propanol, actually, it decreases quite a bit. So therefore, and, and for chronic migraine, it's to the tune of about 20%. So therefore, therefore, I said that new normal would be these drugs where you give once a dose, 
in a, with a subcutaneous injection patient can learn to take it at home also and that is very very uh, important now breaking the cycle sometimes you know the, the headaches keep on going off uh, going on and then uh, you know kind of we have to give some drugs uh, to break the cycle and there are a lot of agents but most importantly at this time i think that don't give corticosteroids because short dose of corticosteroids are often used to break the cycle but during the covid times don't give corticosteroids because you might land up in problems and of course what are the concerns of the healthcare workers fighting the covid 19 pandemic who are having migraine you know with the wearing this ppe i don't know how many of you actually are the front liners but we are we are actually day in day in day out we are managing the covid or suspect covid patients and the residents who are already on this you know ppe they are having a tremendous time and it's hot stuffy and for 6 hours they cannot eat they cannot drink they cannot go to the loo and it's, it's, it's and then after that after uh, doffing they have to get for quarantine so this is basically a paper which has shown that 81% of the healthcare workers in 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 uh, taiwan has actually you know uh, got uh, this uh, headaches because of the ppe so this is again and a kind of an iatrogenic headache and which might mimic like a migraine many of these patients are actually uh, you know conf um, conferred with me regarding what to do because their migraines are so we have published a paper in which uh, in, in annals of indian academy of neurology how to take care of migraine patients during covid 19 and we have pr presented certain guidelines for the uh, for the healthcare workers that you know they don't miss your uh, meals because you have to you have to know about your shifts take adequate fluid take good sleep and don't get depressed so general conditions uh, guidelines for you also you have to tell your patients that uh, they are not more vulnerable to covid 19 infection because of their migraines they should stick to a routine even if they are posted in a covid ward or in in a ward where they are having posted for about 6 to 8 hours uh they must follow a routine and at home also if they you are home quarantined or you are staying at home because of lockdown you must follow a routine because that actually is a very important thing because that maintaining a regular sleep cycle doing aerobic exercises taking regular meals maintaining good hydration by drinking adequate fluids reducing stress by doing meditation yoga avoiding known triggers can be very rewarding in preventing migraine attacks and uh, of course the matter of mind and mental health should be and as the speaker initially said that you know they have more time to get to and uh, you know kind of uh, together with the family and that also actually releases a lot of stress and that probably is also helpful and of course the general care like social distancing and hand wash are very very important so you know how as she has raised the pertinent point that she might be feeling very good so we actually have conducting at the moment a, a study a web based survey of how the migraine patients in india are faring this two versions are there hindi version as well as the english version so this is a web based survey of migraine patients to study the impact of covid 19 pandemic and lockdown in india on their disease activity and quality of life so i would like to you know all of you to participate is i'll send this to uh, dr manoj he can forward it to all of you the link and you can participate and tell your patients also or relatives also or friends also to participate so that we get a real data of how they are faring uh, in terms of the migraine and she might be right that some of the patients actually might be faring much better than the rest but at the end although it looks quite dismal at the moment there is always in the end if we persevere if we devise our ways if we if we stick to the new normals then we actually can survive this catastrophe and that is a smile after this recent amphan uh, cyclone look at this smile and confidence he lost everything but still believes uh, he can stitch the life again so thank you very much for your kind attention so i think now we can uh, take up the questions if uh, there are any dr manoj yeah thank you very much sir uh, thank you for giving a new insight into the treatment uh, of migraine novel treatment in 2020 uh, which is uh, i think uh, going to be future of the migraine treatment mabs and g pens uh, 